Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we explain how to properly install Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 or WSL2 such that we can run Linux Ubuntu, Linux applications or Docker in an isolated environment in Windows 10 or 11. Furthermore, we will explain how to set up and install a desired Linux distribution in WSL. Just in case you need WSL version 1, we will also explain how to downgrade from WSL 2 to WSL 1. Okay, let's start. First, here's some background information for people who are not familiar with the Windows subsystem for Linux. Windows subsystem for Linux, or in short WSL, is very important for number one, people who want to install Docker desktop on Windows. Number two, people who want to run Linux applications without actually installing Linux from scratch or installing a dual boot on their computers. Dual boot provides us with a select menu that enables us to boot either from Windows or Linux when the computer starts. I have personally installed dual boot on all of my desktop computers. However, you have to be an expert to properly set up the dual boot. And WSL enables you to use Linux in Windows, if you can say it like that. Then WSL is also very important for my fellow roboticists. That is for people who want to run robot operating system in Windows. Believe it or not, you can install WSL by using a single command. And the default installation will be WSL2. So let's do that. First of all, click on Start and over here search for Command Prompt. Now, do not immediately open the Command Prompt. Do the right click over here and click on Run as Administrator. And this is very important. If you don't run it as an administrator, you will not be able to install WSL. Okay, so how do we install WSL? And furthermore, with WSL, there will be a default version of Linux, and then later on, we will change that version of Linux. Okay, so how do we do that? We need to type WSL, then install. Okay and you run this and you can see now installing virtual machine platform now this will take some time this will take some time so be patient click on yes and this will basically start right now the installation process started on my computer, it took maybe less than 30 seconds to execute this command. After you do that, you will get this message. Installing Ubuntu, and you can see that Ubuntu is actually installed. Then you will get this message. The requested operation is successful. Changes will not be effective until the system is rebooted. So let's reboot the system. Once the system is rebooted, we are ready to start our Linux. To do that, click on Start. And you will see immediately here Ubuntu, or you can simply search for Ubuntu. So click on Ubuntu, and now you will see installing. This might take a few minutes. And over here, you need to wait. Okay, so here it's written, please create a default Unix user account. The username does not need to match your Windows username. For more information, visit. So I will going to put the username Alexander. This is my first name. And over here you need to set the password. Of course, you're not going to see my password and you will retype the password. And you can see the password update successfully, the operation completed successfully, installation successful, awesome. And what do you see over here? You see Linux user prompt, perfect. Now let's see what will happen if we close this command prompt or our Ubuntu and let's start again. So close here, search here again Ubuntu and click on Ubuntu and again you will immediately be logged in. Let me now just increase the font size such that you can better see what I'm typing over here. For example, let's keep this font size or let's increase this a little bit more. 
Let's do, for example, 24. Perfect, so you can see clearly. Okay, so let's verify the exact Linux Ubuntu distribution. So let's see that. To do that, there is one magic command, and here it is. I like this command a lot. LSB release A, and let's see what do we have. We have Ubuntu, and we have 22.04.3 LTS, and this is the release. Perfect. This is a relatively old Unix or Linux distribution. There is a new one, 24.04. However, people still use 22.04, and I think this version will be maintained at least until 2027. So it's not bad. Now, the power of WSL is that it doesn't restrict us to use a specific Ubuntu distribution. That is, we can also use Ubuntu, some other distribution, or even we can use some other Linux versions. So let's learn how to install some other Linux version, or even Ubuntu version. So let's close this Ubuntu window, and then go over here, search for command prompt, so click on the command prompt, however, don't click immediately, do the right click and run as an administrator and click on yes. And over here, we need to run a few commands. Let me just resize this such that you can see nicely what I'm typing and you can also see my manual. Okay, and like this, perfect. So, to list all available Linux distributions that WSL enables us to install, we need to run this command, WSL list online. So let's see what is the output. Here it is. Uh -huh. We can see that we can install Ubuntu, Debian, Kali Linux, and over here you can even see Ubuntu versions. We can even install this relatively old version, 18.04, then we can install 20.04, which is very important for ROS1 users. And then we can also install 24.04. So let's start this, let's try to install this Ubuntu version 24.04. This is a relatively recent Ubuntu version, and this Ubuntu version can actually run ROS2 Jazzy. So let's try to install this distribution. To install a specific distribution, you need to try, type WSL, then install, then D, and let's write the distribution name. So the distribution name, it can be either this one or this one. I suggest that you use this name. Okay, and let's run this and let's see what will happen. Now you can see that we are installing Ubuntu 24.04, perfect and this will take some time and of course it's going to take your computer space however notice that over here you're actually not installing the complete complete operating system because this is still a lightweight version of course you can improve this by basically installing graphics user interface installing programs etc however we're not going to do this in the in this tutorial again you need to enter the unix name so I'll put my name and I'm going to put the same password and you need to verify the password and that's it. Okay, installation successful and now you can see that we are currently in Ubuntu and we see this terminal prompt. So let's just now verify what is this distribution. Let's see and we can see that it's 24.04. Perfect. But wait a second, what happens with the version 22.04 that we just installed together with WSL? That is, what happens with the default Ubuntu version? So let's investigate. So let's close this window and click over here and search for Ubuntu. And over here you can actually see this Ubuntu version. However, you will also see Ubuntu 24.04, right? So if you type 24, you will actually see an app installed, which is amazing. So if you just type Ubuntu, let's see it again, what will start? You're going to start the classical version, and if you type LSB release, let me just, uh, A, you will see this one, right? However, let's see another one. So if you do this, and we, if you type Ubuntu, 20, 24.04, if you click there, 
then this one will start so we can do the same thing let me just type here and we can see that it's 24.04 the power of this is that you can have many Ubuntu or even Linux distributions running in parallel and you can automatically start them by just creating an app which which is done automatically and by just starting that tab simple as that next let's imagine a scenario in which we don't know all the versions of Ubuntu or Linux installed through our WSL to find or better to say to list all the versions we need to open a command prompt and then over here in this command prompt we need to execute this command WSL LV and this will list all the Linux distributions that are currently available. We have Ubuntu, and you can see this star. This means that this is the default version. Then we have Ubuntu 24.04, and you can see version 2.2. Version 2.2 is actually the WSL version. That is, this one runs through WSL2, and this one writes or better to say runs through the WSL2. Of course, we can change the default WSL version from 2 to 1 and more about this in our, in our next video tutorial. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.